another change in the year since the Parkland shooting, something called a risk protection order. It allows law enforcement to take a gun or guns away from a person deemed to be a threat to themselves or others. Now, these orders have already been used many times, including in Broward County. CBS Force Kerry Codd has been investigating exactly how this new tool works. He's live at BSO headquarters with more. Kerry? Elliot and Rudabay, since this law went into effect last March, BSO has used risk protection orders more than 90 times. We wanted to see how they worked, and we were the first news crew to ride along with BSO to see this process up close. We're going to go over to the house. We just need to provide backup. Obviously. This group of Broward Sheriff's deputies is going over safety plans before they serve a risk protection order at a home in central Broward. Lieutenant Alexander Holmes is in charge of this operation to serve the risk protection order. That's an order that removes guns and ammunition from a person deemed by a judge to be a threat to themselves or others. We try to explain to them that, you know, we're there for a civil matter. It's not a criminal matter, you know, that they're not in any trouble, you know, that we're just concerned for their safety and, uh, you know, the safety of the public. Lieutenant Holmes said once these orders come in, deputies are out serving them a few hours later. So we don't want anything to happen within that time frame. You know, we don't want to wait till the next day. Last April, we aired the story of Jerron Smith on CBS 4 News. The Broward Sheriff's Office used a new gun law passed and signed following the deadly school shooting in Parkland. The Broward Sheriff's Office says they took these guns and this ammunition away from Smith in Deerfield Beach. It was the first time BSO made an arrest under the state's new Risk Protection Order Law, or RPO. BSO says Smith was arrested a few days prior to having his guns and ammunition removed for shooting into a man's car, and investigators deemed him a threat. Smith faced criminal charges in the RPO case because he refused to immediately surrender his guns. I think that lives are being saved. It's been a very effective tool for law enforcement. CBS 4 News recently spoke with BSO Captain Mike Riggio, who's in charge of the Threat Management Division, and with Brooke Lotta, Assistant General Counsel for BSO. They oversee parts of the RPO program. We've filed RPOs on individuals who have made threats to shoot up schools, shoot up malls, shoot up churches, um, shoot up neighbors. BSO says the court process to get an RPO filed against someone contains layers of legal protections for the accused and requires clear and convincing evidence. They set out about 14 or 15 different factors to look for. Has the individual ever been arrested for a violent crime? Has the individual recently acquired firearms? Has the individual made any threats or has been violent to another individual or to themselves? You're seeing that there's three or four different things that are leading you to, to start this removal of firearms as opposed to a person who may have just said something randomly, you know, out of anger. So here's how this process works. Investigators get a tip about someone making a threat, either from a tip from the public or a social media post or an ongoing law enforcement investigation. Investigators go out and try to talk to the people involved and they try to answer some of the questions that that attorney mentioned earlier in the story. If investigators feel that they have a case, they will go to a judge and ask that judge to sign one of these, a temporary risk protection order. If the judge signs it, and investigators go out, try to find the person who's been deemed to be dangerous and seize their firearms and ammunition. Risk protection orders became law through the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Public Safety Act, passed by the Florida legislature and signed by Governor Rick Scott in the weeks after the Parkland shooting. Across the country, research shows that 13 states currently have RPOs on the books, and gun control advocates expect that number to increase. It's an idea that has received bipartisan support in the recent past. We've been talking for some time about uh, extreme risk protection orders, and, uh, and today we're here to unveil that bill, as you can see, is bipartisan. Florida Senator Marco Rubio first filed legislation to create RPOs and spoke about them the month after the Parkland shooting. The legislation didn't go anywhere in Congress, and he recently filed similar legislation again. Even the head of the NRA's legislative arm, Chris Cox, endorsed RPOs in the aftermath of Parkland. We need to stop dangerous people before they act. So Congress should provide funding for states to adopt risk protection orders. This can help prevent violent behavior before it turns into a tragedy. Investigators like Riggio believe their work is preventing possible and even likely gun violence. There have been a few recently that we say, wow. We're thankful that it went through. The judge saw it the way we saw it. Back at the ride along, deputies can take a person's guns, ammunition, and their concealed weapons permit using this risk protection order. The information on the person also goes into databases to prevent them from legally buying a gun. Deputies were unsuccessful serving this RPO on their first attempt, but they'll stay at it. 
Now, I'm told there have been legal challenges to the risk protection orders, but they've been ruled constitutional at this point. And critics of RPOs generally point to two things. One, could false claims be used to take someone's guns? Well, investigators here at BSO said they thoroughly investigate all claims to make sure they are valid. The other criticism, whether the accused has an appropriate chance to make their case in court. I am told that the accused does have a chance to state their case at a court hearing a couple of weeks after the temporary risk protection order is filed. Live at BSO, Kerry Codd, CBS 4 News Tonight.